2 Corinthians. Why don't you have your Bibles there? 2 Corinthians. So you pray for Rose and Joe in the Philippines. They'll be there till a little while. So pray for them, all right? This deal of another spirit and another gospel and another Jesus. I am, I am um, devoting some of my mind resources to studying certain things. And uh, I won't really talk much about them right now because I have to develop certain thoughts before I let my mouth run. Um, I can see it coming. I can see another gospel. Okay, How many of you have any plans on turning Mormon in the next week or so? Anybody? No. Okay. How many of you have any plans of becoming Jehovah's Witness? No, Buddhist, no Buddhism, okay, Shinto, okay, Jainism, any, any, any Muslim, anybody looking into Islam, thinking Islam is it, I think I'll go kill a bunch of people and have 70 virgins, okay, 100% Bible-believing Christian, okay, let me tell you something, the delusion that God is going to turn this world loose on is going to be a strong one. A very strong delusion. Okay? And I will say that I believe everybody sitting in this room, including myself. Linda, you can come on up here. Go ahead, get in your place where you're comfortable. Everybody in this room, including myself, is already affected by it. Okay? That's what I can say. I can tell you without any doubt, any reservation of mind whatsoever, that everybody in this room is already affected by what is coming. Okay? And at some point, you'll have to push back and say, no more. Okay? This is, there's a line that I won't cross, and this is it right here. Okay? And I, I just saw myself doing that last night. All right? And... And I mean, just before I was ready to go to bed, God gave me, I'd say, probably the, the biggest part of what I'm going to preach this morning. Right before I went to bed, so I didn't have time to really just develop it and everything. I'm working it through in my mind right now. Okay, so if I seem detached, there's half of me working on the sermon for, an, for about an hour from now, okay, and the other half's trying to teach Sunday school. So, uh, and they... They kind of tie together. So, 2 Corinthians 11, Paul said, I'm je verse 2, from jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I've espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means. That leaves it wide open, doesn't it? How many means are there? Any means, okay? As the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You want eternal life? Amen? You don't, you don't want to die and go to hell? Because that's what we're trying to... Every day that we keep ourselves alive, every day that we feed this body, and I'm talking about everybody on the planet, every day that they feed their body and try to maintain life in them, they are avoiding one more day of hell. Okay? That's what they're avoiding. And... Um, even, even in our flesh, our flesh is not going to heaven. It is going to die, and it's going to rot, it's going to corrupt in the ground, it's going to burn up at the end of the world. It is trying to avoid dying off, all right? It is trying to do that. Um, where was I going with that? That's pretty good, but anyway. Um, I fear lest by any means as serpent beguiled eat through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The simplicity of Christ is that Christ died for your transgressions, and you accept that by faith, God saves you by His grace, and He gives you eternal life. But not in this body. Just figure that this thing is already gone, count it, count it but lost. God will, God will strip it from you when He's ready. Amen? God will do that. God will strip this flesh off of you when He is ready, when you're ripe, when the harvest time comes in your life, God will take it from you. And he will give you eternal life. It is that simple. It is simple enough that 
Who in here accepted Christ as a young child? Okay, several of you. It is that simple. It's not any more complicated, Courtney, than when you first came to the Lord Jesus and you came to your mom and I and said, I think I want to be saved. I think I want Jesus. Okay? It's not any more complicated than that. Don't let anybody complicate the cross. It is simplistic. It is such that little children are of the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Come unto me. He said, suffer the little children. Come unto me and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he took them and he held them in his arms and he blessed them. That's what Jesus did. Okay? So don't think that the gospel is any more complicated than that. And anybody who tries to bring a complication to the cross, to Calvary, to Golgotha, to your salvation, they have another gospel behind that complication. I guarantee you, to the degree that it is not the cross, it is probably of works, of some performance or necessity that you bring to the table that Christ didn't supply for you. I'll even give you this. You, you believe by faith, right? Amen? For by grace are you saved through faith. Who supplied you the faith? God did. For his, your faith comes by hearing the word of God. God supplied your faith. He supplied the source of your faith. You trust the word of God. You believe it. God supplied even that for you. And so anyway, I'm just telling you, beware of someone offering you grace, eternal life, um, immortality, godhood. Beware of anybody offering those things by some other means than the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? You guys are just dying to know what's crawling around in my brain. All right? Now turn to John chapter 16. Well, I didn't read, I didn't read verse 4. For if he that cometh that preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, is there another Jesus? You, there's going to be. There's going to be another Jesus. He did not say another Buddha. He did not say, say another Joseph Smith. He did not say another uh, Allah. He said another Jesus. There is going to be another Jesus, a fake, false, phony Jesus. Jesus. Um, let's run with that. Let's delve into that. All right. I'm going to show you a picture of what another Jesus looks like. You ready? First Samuel. Now I now I'd open my mouth. Now I got to tell you where to go. First Samuel. Let's see here. Where do I need to go here? Where is the woman that had the familiar spirit? Where is that? 1 Samuel 20, 20 where? It's right before Saul died. And he goes to the woman who had the familiar spirit. Lord, why did you get me into this? There we go. Here we go. Found it. Got it. We're good. Uh, first, I'm going to say um, 28. Yeah, 1 Samuel 28. Watch this. We already know what's happened to Saul by this time. He has rejected the word of the Lord. He rejected it. And he tried to excuse himself uh, against it and uh, was given time to confess and he didn't confess. He lied about it. Hey, Samuel told him, he said, you have not obeyed God. He said, yeah, I did. And then Samuel said, then why, why do I hear sheep in the background? Okay, if you obeyed God, I would not be hearing sheep bleeding. All right. So anyway, he rejected the word of the Lord. And then the Bible says very plainly that God took his spirit away from Saul and a, an evil spirit from the Lord was given over to Saul. He was turned over to an evil spirit. And, and Saul is constantly trying to kill David. Every time David shows up on the scene, Saul wants him dead, all right? So now what? David is a type of Christ. So now in um, verse, we're in chapter 28, 1 Samuel, uh, verse 5. 
When Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. The Philistines are the enemies. They represent like hell and devils and things like that. Uh, the Philistines are always against God's people. They're against God's inheritance. They're always trespassing on God's land. They're always trying to steal the Ark of the Covenant until God finally let them have it. Then they wanted, it, they wanted to give it back, okay, because it was killing all of them. So verse 6, when Saul inquired of the Lord, this is very, very important. When Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Very plainly. Saul inquired of the Lord, and God said nothing. He gave him nothing back. He's not talking to Saul ever again. Very, very important to remember. What three things is God not talking to Saul by? Dreams, the Urim and the Thummim, which to this day we have no idea what that was. Okay, But it was some way of divining what God said. All right? And then we have the prophets. Samuel was a prophet. Samuel was a prophet. All right? So now watch this. Verse 7. Then said Saul unto his servant, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit. We're not dealing with the Holy Spirit. We're dealing with a different spirit, another spirit. Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, uh, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit, and her name is Endora. I added that in. She is at Endor. The people who wrote the show Bewitched knew this part of the Bible. They called her Endora, the mother of the witches. Okay? That's who she was on that show. I, used to, I, watched, I watched probably every episode of that show. Never could understand why she switched husbands right in the middle of it. Both of them named Darren. Never could figure that out. But she, this, this woman on this TV show was a type of what you see here in your Bible. Witchcraft. So Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, and he went... Two men with him, and they came to the woman by night, and he said, I pray thee. He did not say, ask God to show me this. He said, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die. She's not stupid, even though she's a witch. Okay, she's pretty wise. She goes, you're asking me to do something illegal here. And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Who shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Who is Samuel? Prophet. And God is not speaking to Saul by the prophets. He's not doing it. God did not send Samuel back from the dead. Amen? That is called, here's what she's doing. This is called necromancy. The Greek word necros means death. Okay? Necromancy and mancy means like witchcraft by means of a certain thing. Okay? So necromancy is witchcraft or divining by way of speaking to those who are dead. Be like going to a fortune teller and saying to a fortune teller, I need you to contact my uncle so-and-so. I see a, there's a lockbox and we don't know where the key is and we need him to tell us where the key is and he died a year ago. We found the lockbox. We think it's got his will in it. We want his money. So that's what they'll do. They'll bring some spirit up and that spirit, watch this now, is somewhat familiar with who this person is and these people's lives. He is a familiar spirit. So when they bring this spirit forward, this is not the ghost of the dear departed soul. That soul is either in its place of torture or its place of rest. The Bible is very clear on that. At, even at this time, 
Those who lived by faith were not in hell being in torture. They were in Abraham's bosom at rest until Christ. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay? So, when someone goes to the fortune teller, they'll bring forth this spirit, this ghost. And this spirit will pretend to be Uncle John or Uncle Freddie or Uncle Herbert or whoever know, might know where this key is. And this uncle, this spirit, is going to say things, and the people, their hair is going to stand up on the back of their neck, and they're going to go, ooh, only Uncle Ned will know that. He's the only one that will know that. This has got to be him. So they're, they're caught into it. They believe it. You see, strong delusion took place, didn't it? Now they believe a lie. They believe that the spirit that they're talking to is dear Uncle Ned, and the devils of hell are laughing, and they're going, we got this one. And before we can tell them where the key is, we need, we need money. We need presents. We need a cut of what they're going to get out of this box or whatever. That's how, that's how it works. Familiar spirits always don't take credit cards or checks. They take cash. God's spirit will give you revelation free of charge. Amen? Free of charge. No money, no requirement, no performance, nothing. God's Spirit gives freely to those who ask. Amen. So he goes, so Uncle Ned, this spirit, might know where the key is, might know different things and so on, and lead these people on a little lie, and now they're hooked into this for the rest of their life, unless God saves them out of it. Who in here ever believed, used to believe that kind of nonsense? Be honest. You used to believe the familiar spirits. Fortune tellers, nothing? Okay? Okay? Got a couple. Who online? Raise your hand. I know some of you. Okay? So that's how it works. That's how these people... Uh, Harry Houdini spent his life trying to get in touch with his mother. His dad was a Jewish rabbi. And I don't know if he thought much of his dad, but he really cared for his mom. When his mom died, it bothered him. And he always spent, he spent a lot of time going to uh, fortune tellers and seances and things like that. And him as a magician, he knew tricks. And he would sit at a seance, and all of a sudden, something would appear out of thin air, and he's going, well, I know how they do that. And all of a sudden, he'd flip a light on or something like that, and he'd catch them doing the trick. And he spent his time busting up seances and fortune tellers because he knew how they did it. But what he was doing was he was looking for a real fortune teller. Someone who could get in touch with his mother. Him and his wife made a, a compact between them that whoever died first would, at Halloween the next year, try to contact the living remaining spouse. Okay? And Houdini died being lied to all his life by fortune tellers and lying spirits. He never, if him and his wife Bess would have got saved, they could be in heaven now for all of eternity, worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's not what they did. And this is, this is part of the lie that is coming. The devil knows how to get people sucked in. He'll do just enough miracle to grab people and hold on to them. Just enough for it to work. Amen? So now, um, verse, let's see here. Bring me up Samuel, verse 12. Now, when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. The king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what, thou, what sawest thou? Now we're going to get a description of what she saw. I saw gods ascending out of the earth. Gods. Chase that Bible down in the scripture. Or chase that word down in the scripture. Chase that Bible down in the scripture. Chase that word down in the scripture. Gods are devils. She saw gods ascending out of the earth. Okay? Gods may be able to do that. Souls 
either in hell or Abraham's bosom, do not ascend out of the earth. They were held in place until Christ came to them after his crucifixion and preached to them and delivered, set captivity free. Abraham's bosom now, everybody's in heaven. And those in hell, he told them, stay here until I call for you again. And at the great white throne judgment, he's going to pull, yank every one of them out of hell, judge them, and cast them in the lake of fire. They're going from jail to prison for all of eternity. Aren't you glad you're not going there? Say amen. Okay? This is not Samuel. This is a familiar spirit. These are the gods that ascended out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he's covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. What did Saul think it was? He thought it was Samuel. But it wasn't. It was another Samuel. We already have the proof that this is not Samuel because God refuses now to talk to Saul by any of the prophets. If he wanted, to, if he wanted advice from Samuel, he already had everything that Samuel said to him from God, didn't he? If we want advice from the Holy Ghost or from Jesus, we already have everything that Jesus has for us right here in the book, do we not? Don't go looking for something else other than this. Don't do it. Amen? Don't search. Don't say, well, I heard a guy say that God sometimes His Spirit will work and, and it won't be in the Bible. You know what that is? That is another spirit. You want proof of it? John 16, turn there. Turn to John 16. Here's proof. Boy, I'm telling you what, I had... I'm ready. I had devils all over me this morning. I am not kidding you. John 16, 13. How be it? When he... Remember, we identified the Holy Spirit last week as masculine. Not feminine. Who did Saul go to? Who did Saul go He went to a woman. Okay? He went to a woman to get her spirit. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he should not speak of himself. Holy Ghost never draws attention to himself. Who does he draw attention to? Christ, God, the Father and the Bible. Christ is the Word of God. The Word of God is Christ. There's no separation between the two. You cannot say you have one without having the other. So when the Holy Ghost speaks, He's not speaking of the Holy Ghost. And what do you hear from a lot of these charismatic preachers on TV and in our town? They're always talking about all oh, this, what, oh, the Holy Ghost is doing this, and the Holy Ghost is saying this, and it's all about whatever the Holy Ghost is, and let's forget it. Well, Christ, yeah, Christ died on the cross, that's fine, but now it's all about the Holy Ghost. That is not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost does not draw the attention to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost draws the attention to Christ. Okay? That's, you need discernment. You need King James Bible discernment. Amen? He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Think about what he just said here. Who's he hearing it from? Christ. Who is Christ getting the words from? God the Father. What is the Holy Ghost going to speak of? The Bible. Don't believe the lie that says the Holy Ghost operates and or speaks of things not in the Bible. Don't believe it, people. Please. I'm passionate. Can you not tell? My, I am, I'm a zealot for the Bible. I am in a time when it's hard to find churches that even have one. I'm a zealot for the Bible. Amen? And I'm telling you, someone tries to con you into believing 
that God is now doing something or operating from another source other than the scriptures. They're lying. That's how you tell. So he says, he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. He shall glorify what? Me. Who's talking? Jesus. He shall glorify me. I'm the word of God. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Have you not ever been reading your Bible and read a verse and the Holy Ghost spake to you and doodads jumped up right out the back of your head and tears ran down your cheek and you glorified God because you just now know something that you never knew before and you were reading it right out of the Word of God and you read that a hundred times and never saw it until the Holy Ghost said, watch this. Anybody? Anybody but Mike? Come on. That was, that's this. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. You're reading your Bible. And the Holy Ghost says something to you. And that verse now is just like it just jumped out of the page and it became real. And you just, you just were going. And then you stop for a minute. And you thought, you know, I'm reading the Bible because I'm not doing well. My mind has been out in the world. So why do I now have the Holy Spirit giving me these things that are so precious and so free when I don't deserve it? It's called grace, people. It's how we live. We don't get things because we're good. We get things by grace. Amen? Well, I'm glad we came to church today. Amen? So he said in verse 14, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Verse 15, All things that the Father hath are mine. Now watch this. All things the Father hath are mine. Revelation 5. We see a picture of God. He's sitting on his throne. He's holding something in his right hand. What is it? A book. Sealed. The seven seals. The only person in the universe worthy to open those seals. The lion, the tribe of Judah. He opens those seals. And it, when you read the book, Jesus went, Psst. and something out of the Bible just poured into you. Seven seals? How many spirits of God are there? They're sealed by the Holy Spirit. And there are things that God has for you in this book that last year it wasn't time for you to have it. Now it's time for you to have it. And he opens it up to you and all of a sudden, and now your life is different now than it was a year ago. And it's going to be that way for the rest of your life here. You'll never be the same after that. Listen, please, don't, I don't know who I'm talking to, don't chase another spirit other than the one that is in here. You'll never get satisfied. Never. Except out of here. Amen? How are you doing, Todd? Can I talk about you? You don't mind? The books? You all right? Huh? Todd come here, he came in my office one day with a box, plopped it down on my desk, which really irritates me, because I am the only one who can plop junk down on my desk. There's not room for anybody else's junk. So he popped this box down. I said, what do you got there? He said, this is who I used to be. And I mean, it was occult this, secret this, mystery that, you name it. And he just said it. He said, the only book now that matters to me is my Bible. Okay? And um, he said, you can go through them or get rid of them. Whatever you want. Now, he knows that I study some of these things. Okay? Some things I don't look at. Okay? Some, some occult material I don't touch. I don't get into them. 
And so I haven't gone through them yet. If you're waiting on me to do that, you can wait a long time. But he said, there's only one book now that matters to me. See, he's accepted the fact that he chased down all these other spirits, right? And you were looking for something. Because I know what those books are. They, they promise an opening of a mystery. And they never deliver it. I've read them. I've read Morals and Dogma looking for their secret. And all they did was lie. 850 pages worth of nonsense and lies. They don't deliver the secret. There's only one book in the world that delivers all the mysteries and secrets. And it's right here. This is the only one. This has all the secrets to your life, doesn't it? This exposes you for who you really are. And it tells all the little secrets that you've got, don't, doesn't it? And everybody's got them. Did the bell ring? Does that mean I have to stop? Uh, let me give you this. Well, where is it? Where is it? John six sixty three. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Boom. You want a, you want a dose of the Holy Spirit? Here it is. Which verse? Which chapter? How, much, how many doses? How many verses do you want? How many, how many chapters can you handle? How much of the medicine can you take in one day? How much honey can you swallow at one time? Okay? Probably not much, but it'll be just enough to get you through the day. Can I hear you say amen? By the way, John 6, 66, just three verses later, after he said this, many of them walked, turned back and walked no more with him. Why? Because he said this. They didn't want to follow his words. They wanted something else. Don't fall for it, people. Don't fall for it, okay? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for showing us this lesson. Thank you, God, for this book. It is everything that I have. It's all that I have. I have nothing, Lord, to give to anybody except what's in this book. You've, t you've stripped away, God, everything, Lord, about me, and about what I can say and what I can do, Lord, you've stripped it all away and left me with nothing but this. But, Lord, this is everything. And I thank you, Lord, for showing me that. I didn't deserve it. I still don't. And I thank you, Lord, for showing us these things. God, make us, make us zealots for the Bible in a time when nobody is. Make us zealous for it. Thank you, God, for opening our eyes today and helping us. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen.